While Build is an arcade throwback, Unit Down is more of a hybrid title split into two parts. The game opens in the Big Picture Overworld section. As charmingly dim-witted Wolfman Super Soldier Lars, the player must protect his mothership while it breaks through Earth's defensive barrier with three attacks, each one summoning a boss, then leads the invasion personally. But Earth isn't taking this lying down. The humans are busy setting up countermeasures on other planets, including torpedoes that can destroy the mothership and fighters that hunt Lars down. Lars must hop from planet to planet to keep the humans in check. Once Lars lands, the game switches over to a gallery shooter mode. Enemy soldiers spawn in at regular intervals, along with various elite enemy types with special attack patterns or defenses. Defeating enemy units diminishes the human presence on that planet, which can stop them from attacking the mothership. But the game keeps going on the overworld, and a player who spends too much time on one planet might get an unexpected game over if the humans are able to launch a successful counterattack. So up front, here's what you need to know about Magic Hat. It is an enormous game, easily one of the largest neo-retro platformers I've ever seen. There are 63 levels in all, each with a unique boss and a time attack mode in case that's still not enough for you. Most of the levels are built around a novel gimmick, similar to what one might see in some of the Donkey Kong Country games. Add in the wide variety of tile sets, and Magic Hat really is a game that revels in variety. Probably the most interesting feature here are the items. The player can use gems found in the levels to purchase power-up items that enhance gameplay in various ways. Most of these are about what you'd expect, but there are two very special items that can only be used on the overworld a hammer that can destroy obstacles, and a bridge that can create platforms over gaps. These tools amount to a dev-designed sequence-breaking kit that can allow a clever player to bypass most of the levels while reaching shops and secrets early. And being able to sequence-break is a nice feature, because this cute little game gets sadistically hard in the back half. The bosses in particular turn into bullet hell marathon matches demanding ever more precision. The devs have given you these tools. Don't be ashamed to bypass a level or eight that you just can't quite finish. Adventures of Chris is a platformer in which the protagonist begins with the gift of flight, albeit not an especially graceful or dignified form of flight. Cursed with the body of a helium balloon, he quickly gains the ability to inflate and deflate himself at will. The mechanic is similar to gravity mechanics you might see in other games, but more forgiving than those tend to be. The levels are all built around this concept. Chris can push himself along ceilings, activate carefully timed inflations to drift through spike line corridors, or deflate to drop quickly and avoid attacks. It takes some getting used to, and a controller is definitely recommended, but Adventures of Chris is not a terribly difficult game, so nearly anyone can master the mechanic. The game is fairly short, but there's plenty of replay value for those who want a greater challenge. Meme Mode offers a new set of levels with harder platforming challenges, while also giving Chris a chance to float right over the fourth wall, while developer commentary is just what it says in the tin. And if you think the game would be better if you died twice as fast, well, there's an aptly named option for that too. Adventures of Chris is recommended for anyone who appreciates it when things get good and silly.